Welcome back friends, Kalani here. And it's been a while since I've done a Facilitation Friday video. And I'm doing one today, even though it's Wednesday, but maybe it'll come out tomorrow. So we'll split the difference. So I was just in a music therapy session. I was giving a music therapy session. And I wanna tell you about what happened in that session because I think it was significant because I was using some of the techniques that I teach in the the Drum Circle, a musical approach course, which if you're at the courses level, you have full access to. And uh, I, I, I'm just, every time I use these techniques, I'm reminded that one, that they work, and two, that they're important because they create more than music, right? This is not just about creating music. Uh, you can do that a lot of ways. <laughs> but when we create moments of connection and moments of joy and moments of laughter and, and camaraderie and everything and the human part, you know, that to me is the goal, really the ultimate goal. And it's what matters most. So I want to describe to you what was, what was happening in the session and the techniques that I was using. And it's very simple. So if you're interested in that kind of thing, um, either as a facilitator or just as a musician, or as somebody who's curious about how a music therapist thinks and acts and goes about their work, uh, or any facilitator of music, doesn't have to be only music therapists, uh, although this is coming from my music therapy background and training, then keep watching. And if you're not so interested in that, go watch something else. <laughs> you won't hurt my feelings. Okay, so I, it was during a music therapy session that I had an, an, an elderly woman and a younger man in the same session, I had both of them, and they had very different musical tastes. So what I decided to do is just go to basic rhythmic drumming, right? Just drumming uh, to set up kind of a fun groove that the younger person would relate to, but also do something musical that anyone, regardless of age, uh, could participate in, latch on to, um, and, you know, maybe feel good about in their own way. Because when we're just doing rhythm, people have the opportunity to relate to that any way they want, right? So one person could be thinking of one song or rhythm or dance, and the other person could be thinking of something totally different, each thinking of something or experiencing something uh, to them, you know, to the, to themselves that is meaningful for them with the same basic activity. But so that's, that's at the ground level. All right. So I decided to do that. You can call it a drum jam if you want, or just music, drumming improvisation. And so I'm keeping a beat. Now, once we got started there, they were tapping out some rhythms and, and I'm listening. And, uh, then I started to use the technique called marking, which is a kind of shorter version of the technique called synchronizing. And uh, you can, if you have access to the course, you can see what those are. So I start doing that in addition to keeping a steady beat. And I notice that while I'm doing the, while I'm doing this, while I'm incorporating these techniques, I see moments where the woman was noticing that I was connecting with her musically because she would sort of smile like, oh, and I think it was because she was playing specific things and then I would synchronize with those. I'd play the same thing or part of it. And she, you know, in that moment would notice like, it's sort of like, oh, you see what I'm doing, right? Or you caught me <laughs> or you see me, or at least you see me, right? Which is very important. So that was happening. And then also I was doing the same thing towards the, the young man. Uh, and I'm keeping the beat. So that's sort of how it just progressed. While we were playing, there were moments of, you know, where we'd come together and sort of more be more unified. And then there were times where we would go our own ways and the music would get more diverse and more stretched out in different directions. Uh, there were times when we all got softer, quieter. There were times when we all sped up and had more of an intensification kind of period. And then we eventually kind of came to some sort of natural ending, you know. Um, all, and all of this is happening without me doing any talking. I'm not doing any conducting. I'm not doing any blatant or obvious uh, directing. Just playing 
music. Now, after that was over, and this is the good stuff, I want to share with you what the woman said to me and what the gentleman said to me. So first, uh, you know, I kind of said, oh, that was great. You guys were really, you seem to be really listening to each other. And they were, they did. They were very much in tune with each other and listening to what each other w was doing and playing off of that. So I acknowledge that because I noticed that. Um, even if they weren't really aware of it, I wanted them to know that I saw them doing that because uh, to me, and I told them this, uh, it's a very valuable skill to be able to listen and be interested in what somebody else is doing. That is, a, that is social gold right there, right? Um, so I praised them for that. I gave them some feedback and I said, you know, I could tell you guys were listening to each other and you were making room for each other and you were tuning into we, what each other was, was doing and that was, you know, pu pushing the music forward and it was all evolving on its own uh, in an organic way. And then uh, the woman said to me, well, I, I could tell that you were, you know, hearing me uh, because I would, I would sort of connect with her at moments. And she said, you know, it was great that you made space for me and allowed me to play and, ex you know, kind of express myself um, while at the same time just keeping a steady rhythm. And that, of course, is my goal because I want the rhythm to feel good and be steady and just be like a groove. And that's kind of what I feel like one of my roles is because also I have the skills to do that. But on top of that, she felt like there was a lot of space for her in there. There was a lot of room uh, for her to do whatever she wanted. And on top of that, that I was hearing those things. I was hearing what she was doing because I was responding to them. So she noticed all of that. And then the gentleman also was very... Um, tuned in and I mentioned something that he was doing because he was kind of doing this finger flare like thing with one hand and keeping the beat so I just mentioned that and he said oh yeah that's probably because I have I do video games or something <laughs> a lot um, but whatever it was it was pretty cool and he also was tuning in to what she was doing and they were commenting on each other and so I wanted to share this story with you because to me it is very profound it's, first of all, evidence that these techniques, uh, grounding, synchronizing, marking, uh, that they work. And when applied purposefully and when you apply them, you know, with skill, they usually, I'm not going to say always, but usually produce this kind of result. Um, and they're, so they're powerful and they're substantial. And so I'm just, I wanted to talk about this today because if you haven't looked into these facilitative techniques, is what we call them, uh, I invite you to do so because you may not be aware that you can create and shape musical experiences uh, in this way that I consider to be music-based, right? Because it's all music. There's no talking. There's no conducting. And so the relationships that we create are very diplomatic. They're very, uh, you know, we're sort of on equal footing. There isn't an obvious director or leader, which is great. So everybody has ownership. Everybody can contribute. Uh, and everybody feels heard and seen and valued. And again, that is so important when we're looking to truly facilitate, not not just lead people and make them do things, you know, because anybody can do that, really. But that's not always, you know, maybe producing the best result. I mean, you can produce musical results that way, like I said, if you get up and conduct or direct or dictate. Uh, but uh, there's a cost to that, right, because it changes the relationship. And maybe there's a cost because certain types of moments, certain moments of, oh, ah, oh, they're hearing me, or, or that's cool, or I feel like I have permission to do this, or I'm just going to do whatever I want. You know, those maybe don't happen, and that's too bad if those, if those don't happen, because to me, that's the real valuable stuff uh, that can happen when we're engaging in community music making. 
Okay, so that's it, you guys. Um, if you're curious about what these techniques are, or you think you might want to learn them, or just know about them, in case you do have an opportunity that comes up, uh, maybe it's a family reunion, or a summer camp thing, or a vacation, or a party, or something, and you might have an opportunity to play in a group, and therefore you could facilitate uh, stealthily and musically. Um, that might be nice to have that kind of skill in your back pocket, have that knowledge in your back pocket. So whether you're a, quote, facilitator or not, I invite you to look into these techniques. You can find them all, these and, and more, uh, in the course, The Drum Circle, a musical approach that is available to patrons at the course's level uh, on our Patreon site, patreon.com slash Kalani. All right, go forth and produce music. <laughs> I'll see you guys in another video.